What if I told you AI could solve your biggest CG workflow headaches? Even if you hate AI, I'm gonna show you why it might be your new best friend. Hi, I'm Brian Dean from Annual Studios, and I know that I hate troubleshooting. And if you're like me, you absolutely can't stand when things break and you have no idea why. Now, I used to work at big studios where if you had a major technical problem, you would just submit a ticket and then somebody else would take care of the problem for you and get back to you with the solution. If you're working by yourself, you don't have that luxury. You have to do all the troubleshooting yourself. And if you're not really good with the technical side of things, this can be really, 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 really frustrating. Desperate, you turn to Facebook groups, Discord channels, or Reddit. You struggle to explain your problem, especially if you're new to the software. You upload screenshots, screen recordings, and then you wait. Sometimes help comes quickly, and other times... Or worse, you get sent in the wrong direction and waste even more time. It's a time-consuming, frustrating experience, one that can derail your project, kill your motivation, destroy your momentum, and leave you questioning your career choices. Wouldn't it be great to avoid these headaches? Imagine having a tireless assistant who's read the entire manual, memorized it, and can answer your questions day or night. That's what we're doing right now. We're using AI to sift through mountains of documentation, finding that needle in the haystack that solves your specific problem. It's like having a 24 seven tech support team at your disposal. So I've created a test and I will use three AI tools to try and debug the same issue. Now for this test, I'm gonna be using this old Archviz interior scene. This is a free project from Epic. This is only supported up to engine 4.27. The reason why I'm using this project is because I know it's gonna work for the scenario I wanna set up. So let's take a stroll down memory lane and fire up Unreal 4. So the scenario I'm setting up here is one that a new user might find a little confusing. I know that when I first started using Unreal, this was something I wasn't familiar with and that's baked lighting. I'm going to delete an object after the lights have been baked. Now, as you can see, this leaves a shadow even though the object is gone. Now, if you're not familiar with game lighting, this concept of baked lights, well, it might seem strange to you. You might not have any idea what you're looking at and why this is happening. So I think this is a good case to show a scenario where if you encounter a problem and you don't know much about it, maybe it's something new to you, maybe it's new software, and you don't even know what the cause of the problem is, can AI help you solve the problem with minimal information? All right, now we know what the problem is that we're gonna try and debug. Let's go over the rules of the test. First, I will upload a screenshot which shows the image and I'm gonna circle the problem area in red. And part of the test will be to see if it recognizes the circled area and knows that that is the problem that I'm trying to figure out. Then I have three questions which I will ask it. And the questions are, number one, simply, why is there a dark spot on my image? Stage two, I'm gonna give it a little more information and I will say, this happened after I deleted a blanket that was draped over the chair. It looks like the shadow is still there. So questions one and two are assuming that not only do I not know how to fix this, but I don't even know what the problem is. For question three, I'll assume that I figured out what the problem is, but I still don't have the solution. So question three is, there is baked lighting in the scene. I moved the blanket, now how do I fix the lighting? All right, so I'm just gonna start off the chat by saying I need some help with Unreal. All right, so now I've given Claude my image, I've asked it the question, and let's see what it says. All right, so it's given me an answer, let's see what it says. The dark spot you were seeing on the chair in the red circle, so this is great. It noticed that there was a red circle there. I didn't tell it where it should look. It saw the red circle and it was able to understand that that was the area I was talking about. The dark spot you're seeing on the chair in the red circle appears to be a rendering or lighting issue. This could be caused by a few different factors. Shadow artifacts. Uh, material issues, light map resolution, overlapping UV islands, geometry problems, light leaking. Okay, now under the steps to resolve the issue, number three does say rebuild the lighting, which is the correct answer, but we're not going to count this because it hasn't correctly identified the problem yet. Uh, so let's give it our second question. We're going to give it a little bit of help. This happened after I deleted a blanket that was draped over the chair. It looks like the shadow is still there. So now let's see what it says. If I give it a little more information. Ah, that explains it, so it seems like it knows. 
You've correctly identified the issue. What you're seeing is indeed a ghost shadow from the deleted blanket. This is a common problem in 3D rendering and game engines, especially when working with pre-baked lighting. Here's what's happening. Baked lighting. Unreal Engine uses a system of pre-computed or baked lighting for static objects to improve performance. This lighting information is stored in light maps. Outdated light maps. When you deleted the blanket, the light maps weren't automatically updated, so the shadow information from the blanket is still present in the scene's light maps. Great, it identified the problem. Rebuild the lighting is in fact the correct fix. So, okay, so Claude did pretty well. It got the answer on the second stage. Notebook LM requires a source to reference. The Unreal docs are not downloadable. At least I haven't been able to find any downloadable version. So I had to copy and paste them into a Google doc. So as you can see here, I've copied and pasted all of the relevant uh, lighting and rendering sections of the documentation. As, as, you, as you can see, there's 552 pages here. So it's not quite the entire documentation, but it's pretty much everything that, that involves lighting and rendering. Okay, now we're in Notebook LM, and I'm just gonna source that document I created. The good thing is that I can link it directly from my Google Drive. Okay, so it looks like it's finished processing our document here. So now in order to deal with the workaround, since you can't paste an image directly into the chat like you can with Claude, what I'm going to do is create a second document that I will paste the image into. So here I've created a document called Problem Image and I will source this one to Notebook LM. Now I'm gonna add another source. And here you can see this has the problem image in the document. So it does in fact have this sourced. I will modify this just a bit, just to tell um, Notebook LM that the problem image is indeed in the problem image document. So I will start off the same way. I need help with Unreal. This is a broad query. The source offer the sources offer a lot of information about using Unreal. To give you the most insightful and helpful answer, please tell me. Okay, and it's asking for specifics. Great. Okay. So we will now give it question number one. Question number one, and I'm simply gonna put at the end C image in problem dot in problem image doc. Okay, here we go. Um, the sources provide information on various lighting and shadowing techniques in Unreal Engine, but they do not directly address troubleshooting dark spots in rendered images. The dark spot in the image could be caused by numerous factors, including, and it's going through a bunch of things here. Um, it's also, it's also unclear if it's looking at the correct part of the image, uh, the dark spot that's in the circle. All right, so we're just gonna continue on. I will now proceed to stage two. I will ask it the second question. This happened after I deleted a blanket that was draped over the chair. It looks like the shadow is still there. Ah, and here we go. It did get the problem. Okay, shadow baking and persistence. The sources primarily focus on the technical aspect of various lighting and shadowing techniques with Unreal Engine, but they do not directly address how shadows persist after an object casting them is deleted. The issue you're encountering might be related to how Unreal Engine handles light map baking for static lighting. Okay, so it looks like it did get the uh, the solution. It's a little unsure of itself. Uh, Claude seemed to be quite confident in its answer, but it did correctly identify the problem and it did correctly give me the steps to fix the problem. It is indeed to go and rebuild the lighting. So Google LM was a little bit more clunky perhaps, um, and it was a little unsure of itself, but it did however arrive at the answer in step two. So let's now move on to ChatGPT. It looks like all of the GPTs are for Unreal Engine 5. I don't see too many that are for Unreal Engine 4, and the few that I do see don't appear to be in English. So we're going to go out on a limb here and we're going to use the Unreal Engine 5 expert and we're going to see if that can solve our problem. Fingers crossed. 
Okay, so with the Unreal Engine 5 Expert loaded up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run the test. Hopefully it will be able to figure out Unreal Engine 4's problem. I mean, this is basically a problem that would exist in both. So, I mean, I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna try it out. All right, so we're gonna start off by asking it our question. So we'll say, why is there a dark spot on my image? And I'm going to paste the screenshot into our chat window here and let's see what it says. Ah, okay, the dark spot on your chair in the image. Okay, so once again, this was pretty smart. It identified that there was a chair with a circle in it and it knew that that was where it needed to look. Okay, lighting issue. The dark spot may be due to incorrect lighting calculations, such as shadow artifacts. Check your light source. Ensure that light map resolution for the object is high enough. Uh, so again, this kind of gave me the same things that Claude did. None of these are correct. Uh, light map UVs, material issues. Um, so it's giving me some problems here and some potential fixes. Now here, as with Claude, it said as one of the fixes to rebuild the lighting, which is the correct solution. But since it didn't identify the problem, we're not going to count it in this round. So it's not quite getting to the problem. It is giving me the correct answer here. So let's continue on to step two. This happened after I deleted a blanket that was draped over the chair. It looks like the shadow is still there. Ah, that clarifies the situation. It seems that after you deleted the blanket, the shadow that was baked into the scene is still visible, causing the dark spot. This happens because Unreal Engine stores lighting information, including shadows, in a light map. Okay, great. So it also arrived at the same conclusion, and as Claude, it was very confident that it knew what the answer was. That clarifies the situation, it says. It identified the problem and how to fix it. It also gave the correct solution. So all three of these solve the problem on stage two of our test. On none of them did we have to actually tell it what the problem was and then ask for the solution. These AI large language models are great for processing loads of information very quickly, but they do have some limitations. Most can't access the internet in real time, so their knowledge has a cutoff date. For Claude, this cutoff date is April 2024, meaning it won't know about Unreal Engine beyond version 5.3. So for newer versions, you would need to provide the docs yourself. Now I was able to drop in the documentation file that I created a strictly text version into Claude and ChatGPT with no problem. So for any subjects that might be more recent than the cutoff date, both Claude and ChatGPT will let you input additional info. But with Unreal's online only docs, you'll need to do some prep work. Now the upside is right out of the box, these LLMs often have enough built-in knowledge to answer many general questions about most Unreal topics. Notebook LM, however, is different. You will always need to provide the source material, but it does have a cool feature which the others don't, and that is that the answers come with clickable footnotes, taking you right to the source. This helps check accuracy or allows you to dive deeper into the topics. The downside, no direct image input yet. Speaking of diving deeper, Notebook LM also has this fun deep dive podcast feature. It's not that great for documentation, but I tried it with my astronauts pilot script and season one outline. It basically generates this fake podcast with these two podcasters. And well, here's a little taste. All right, buckle up space cadets. We're launching a deep dive into the astronauts screenplay. Where do we even begin with this one? Well, we're here to pick apart the characters, the plot, all of it. Sounds like a wild ride. That's an understatement. Yeah. Right from the start, you know this isn't your typical space opera. Oh, absolutely not. It's a brilliant satire of our modern obsession with fame, all cleverly disguised as a sci-fi adventure. Exactly. Instead of a crew of seasoned astronauts, we get a bunch of social media influencers more concerned with their follower count than, say, oh, I don't know, a black hole. All right, that's it. No, no spoilers. It's a fun little feature and uh, I'm not sure how useful it is, but it's kind of interesting. Now, if you want to see the promotional video we did for astronauts, I'll put the link for that down in the description below. So I hope this shows you uh, some various different ways in which AI can help you out in your workflow. If you are an independent artist like me, if you're working on a small team or even by yourself, I think that using AI to enhance your workflow, speed up your process, or just make you more efficient in whatever way possible. And in this case, it just helps me solve problems that might've otherwise taken me a lot longer to fix. Instead of searching the internet and looking online, watching tons and tons of tutorials, reading through pages and pages of docs, I can just simply just ask one of these LLMs and see if I can get an answer or at least narrow it down so I know where to look or what tutorials to read or what part of the documentation I should even be looking for to solve my problem.
So not only are these AI tools good for helping you solve technical problems that you may have, but you can ask it whatever question you might have. Like, how do I increase the quality of my lumen scene? How do I create a material instance? What's the difference between stationary and movable lights? What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Huh? I, I don't know that. <laughs> well, you get the point. Hopefully you can see how helpful these tools can be in aiding you in your creative endeavors in Unreal or anything else for that matter. These tools can be used for Maya or Blender or Houdini or really anything you want. So we've seen how Claude can process large amounts of documentation, answer nuanced questions, and even analyze images to help with visual debugging. Google's Notebook LM serves as a virtual research assistant, helping you gain insights faster from your own content. And specialized GPTs can provide detailed, context-specific information for tools like Unreal Engine. All right, well, that's all I've got for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And then turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss any future videos. I deleted blanket that was draped over the chair. But it looks like it looks like the shadow is still there. How do I fix it?